What is going on guys, it is WrestleLabia here, back with another episode. Vice's Dark Side of the Ring second season continues with a look at one of the most controversial wrestlers in history, that being New Jack. However, did we learn anything new in this episode? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at Vice's new Dark Side of the Ring episode, The Life and Crimes of New Jack, and looks at six new shocking details that we learned from it. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Jerome Young, aka New Jack, has been one of wrestling's most controversial figures in the sport's history, not only for his outrageous racially charged interviews, but for several real-life assaults on opponents in the ring, two of which led to felony charges. From his days as a race baiter in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, to his violence fueled matches in ECW, and his last days on the indie circuit, New Jack has been the proverbial lightning rod for controversy. And like some wrestlers, it's not an act, as various figures interviewed in the documentary will attest. But what did we learn? Well, number one, the NAACP condemned the tag team's actions. The Life and Crimes of New Jack covers the material you'd expect to hear about his career, as well as the shocks he created on everyone around him. The episode begins with Jack's time in Jim Cornette's Smoky Mountain Wrestling during the 90s, where New Jack played on the racial tensions caused by the Rodney King incident and the O.J. Simpson trial. New Jack's tag team with Mustafa Saeed as the gangsters was a natural heat magnet, but with Cornette's promotion based in Knoxville, Tennessee, it was even more the case as their team played on racial tensions, inciting white fans. After the gangsters reimagined the Rodney King assault with the gangsters and their allies beating down beloved babyface Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express, things got so hot that the gangsters needed a police escort to escape the arena. But things even went so far that the NAACP protested the gangsters' actions, which only led to them incorporating them into promos. D'Lo Brown and New Jack discussed the many racial slurs hurled at them by fans and the near riots they caused. Vice's wrestling show focuses on interviews with New Jack, Jim Cornette, D'Lo Brown, who worked alongside the gangsters early on in his career, Sandman, and midget wrestler Tiny the Terrible. Number two, why it was so violent. The program goes into New Jack's childhood with the wrestler recalling the domestic violence he witnessed such as his father stabbing his mum and his father stabbing his mum when she tried to leave. New Jack uses this as his excuse for some of his more violent episodes in the ring, but his excuse seems flimsy when we see how many times he lost his temper in the ring, intentionally stabbing and bludgeoning opponents. Dark Side of the Ring talks about mystique surrounding New Jack's past, including stories of him working as a bounty hunter and several justifiable homicide cases. Here, the producers take a way out by not investigating New Jack's past enough, something which conceivably would take much effort. Instead, the documentary goes off on an odd tangent rather than focusing on New Jack. For example, in case you didn't know it, Jack's tag partner Mustafa Saeed gained notoriety backstage because he smoked pencil shavings. Listening to wrestlers such as D'Lo Brown and the Sandman, it's apparent Mustafa was willing to smoke anything he could get his hands on. It's an interesting sidebar in the episode, but it's telling of how the show needs to pad the episode rather than focus on the subject. Number three, how New Jack managed to get acquitted. Naturally, the story that everyone wants to know about is the infamous mass transit incident, which we covered in full detail in our final bell episode, The Mass Transit Incident, which saw New Jack nearly kill rookie wrestler, and that's being generous, Eric Cullis. The program provides some background on Cullis' work wrestling a duo of midget wrestlers, which caught ECW's attention. However, as been widely documented, the 17-year-old Cullis lied about the level of training he had and about his age, stating he was 21 years old. According to New Jack, Cullis sealed his fate when Cullis asked him to sell some moves for him, a complete sign of disrespect by the rookie towards the veteran. New Jack said Paul Heyman gave him carte blanche to do whatever he liked, and when Cullis agreed to let him cut him, New Jack used his scalpel, butchering Cullis' forehead and leading to a bloodbath. The aftermath was New Jack's arrest, but for whatever reason, Dark Side of the Ring doesn't discuss how this nearly killed ECW's efforts to get its pay-per-view barely legal aired. It's a key part of the story and even a brief mention would have shown how New Jack's work was important in feeding the bloodthirsty fans while endangering the promotion's existence at the same time. New Jack opens up about his trial and how his attorney told him he was looking at five years in prison if he took a plea. When Jack's attorney told him he thought he could beat the case, Jack gambled on a trial and was acquitted. 
The narrative presented in The Life and Crimes is that the jury ruled in New Jack's favour when ECW promoter Paul Heyman testified that Eric's father had called him the N-word and the jury learned Eric lied about his age. Seemingly, that was enough to acquit New Jack. Number 4. Cherry Picking the Evidence While it's common belief that documentaries are fact-based quests for the truth, the reality is that documentaries often pick and choose what facts to present. In New Jack's case, there are various parties who are unable to discuss the case or unwilling. For example, former ECW owner Paul Heyman could provide much insight into New Jack's worse and Jack's criminal case, but with him working for the WWE, it's obvious he's not going to show up. Likewise, the family members of Eric Cullis, who passed away in 2002 following complications from gastric bypass surgery, chose not to appear on the video, stating they did not want to revisit the trauma of the case. There has been a good amount written about the mass transit incident, including the book Hardcore History, which has a chilling quote from behind the scenes worker Don Label. I was frightened watching it because it was well planned out. What New Jack and Mustafa did to him was criminal, it really was. I was just inches away from him, and I swear, in all my years in wrestling, I never saw blood shooting out like that. Label will go into the back and told Heyman, You've got to do something. They're going to close the show. He just looked at me and said, So? Sean Assel and Mike Mooneyham's book Sex, Lies and Headlocks also provides further insight into the reason for New Jack's acquittal. Claiming long-term emotional and physical damage, Cullis pressed criminal assault charges against Young, but the wrestler was cleared in 1999 when his six-person jury viewed a tape of Cullis pressing together his lips and puffing out his cheeks, an action to make the blood flow more freely, and decided Cullis was a willing participant. Did Dark Side of the Ring simply want to pursue the narrative of a race-driven jury decision while ignoring other evidence? What other evidence and interviews did the producers choose to ignore? Does Vice feel that its audience can't read a quote or they'll change the channel? It's incredible why the producers chose to ignore so many resources, but again, that is their choice. Number 5. His Lesser Known Crimes While the mass transit incident personified New Jack's career, there were other incidents which showed his penchant for shooting on opponents, including the Vic Grimes incident, the Gypsy Joe incident, and the Hunter Red Assault. After Vic Grimes accidentally hurt New Jack in a sick bump, resulting in New Jack fracturing his skull and losing sight in his eye, New Jack was prepared to end Grimes the next time they meet. New Jack's premeditated attack saw him get a stun gun and use it on Grimes before knocking him off a makeshift balcony. Incredibly, Grimes only suffered a dislocated ankle. New Jack's baseball bat attack on 69-year-old wrestler Gypsy Joe, who New Jack claimed was no selling for him, and on another occasion, New Jack repeatedly stabbing opponent Hunter Red after Red allegedly potatoed him, leading to Jack being charged with aggravated battery, a charge that could have landed him in prison for 15 years. In an incredible reversal of fortune, Jack escaped the charges after Hunter met with Jack in jail and told him the two could make a fortune working matches based off the shoot. New Jack agreed but told Red he'd have to drop the charges first, something Red did only for Jack to leave Florida, never working with his victim. And number 6, New Jack was pictured as an anti-hero. With so much material to draw from, Dark Side of the Ring does its usual job of providing an overview of its subject and bringing in enough figures associated with New Jack to share their side of the story. The problem is that while the people interviewed are helpful, there are so much more that the life and crimes could have included. As compelling a story as it might have been to learn about New Jack's tag partner Mustafa smoking pencil shavings, or the abundance of lady friends midget wrestler Tiny the Terrible had, it would have been even better to have spent time investigating New Jack's life and separating fact from fantasy. The producers of Dark Side of the Ring had ample opportunity to uncover who the real Jerome Young slash New Jack is, but instead went with the more exciting route of presenting a disgrace to the wrestling industry as some sort of mysterious and violent anti-hero who worked on his own terms. The reality is that New Jack routinely broke the fundamental law of wrestling, protect your opponent, and when he talks of wanting to come close to killing his opponent, there's no question he belongs anywhere but in the ring. Add in New Jack's admission that he routinely did drugs and drank before matches, and there's little question why New Jack never went beyond Smoky Mountain Wrestling or ECW. Ultimately, Dark Side of the Rings at Life and Crimes of New Jack is a well-produced episode that breaks some new ground. Anyone who thinks the show is investigative journalism is unfamiliar with the facts to what investigative journalism is all about. There's no doubt Dark Side of the Ring is a success, but this episode is little more than a recount of well-known facts and even then it's somewhat lacking. But there you have it guys, 6 shocking new details we learned from Dark Side of the Rings New Jack episode. 
Did you guys see the show? If so, what did you think about it? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.